people, 58. Most is above 50% for you, just so you know. If anything ever says most, it means above 50%. Most people are, are between 18 and 20, 21. No problem, 58%. Let's do the rest of them on your own. Take out your calculator, figure out the percentages for the rest of our classes. Guys, if I'm walking around and you don't know what you're doing, now is the time to ask me when I'm here to help you right now. So if you're like a little lost, Okay, let's get back up here. If you're struggling a little bit on finding this, what we're doing for each individual class, you're taking the frequency divided by your total count. That's your N or your sum of frequencies, which is pointing to the 43. So for this one, we did 25 divided by 43. Now that did give us 0.581. We're just changing that to a percentage because most people are better with percentages. You don't have to if you don't want to. I really don't care. For the next one, we're going to take what number? Divided by what? What's 10 divided by 43? 23.23 point, 23 point what? You have to round correctly in here. So learn your rounding rules. You look at the decimal place past where you're trying to round. So if I said three decimal places, I think on, on your calculator it would have been uh, 0 0.232556. Yes? No. What is it? 23, 25, 48. 58, okay. Well, that's pretty close. Come on now. Wow. <laughs> so we're trying to round here, right? We look just at the digit to the right. Not all this crap. We don't care about that. Just at this digit. If that's five or more, you better round this one up. If this is less than five, you leave this one alone. And then you stop your, your, your number. So in our case, we are 0.233. If you round incorrectly in this class, it's going to kill you. And the reason is, is because we deal with very small numbers and very precise numbers a lot of the times. We'll be at the fourth, fifth, sometimes even sixth decimal place when we're working with equations. If you round incorrectly on just a little portion of it, and we use that number over again, then we use that number over again, and we use that number over again, do you see how your error is going to be multiplied? Do you see that? It's like an exponential error after that. That's not a good thing. You're going to be way off. And in this class, it's really a precise class. So here, we need to learn how to round. If, if you don't really know, you're not quite sure, come and see me. I'll help you out with that. So in our case, we had, I'll, I'll make, make it also a percentage. So we rounded to 0 0.233. We'll make it 23.3%. How many we got 23.3%? Good, all right. Now, you've already done the rest of it, I'm sure. So what's our 4 divided by 43? 9 point what now? 3 0. 3 0? Oh, good point. Thanks. <coughs> Do you want to split that other one, sir? Nope. I just messed it up. How about the 2? Which one? Seven. Okay. How about 4 the 1? 
2.3. How about for the zero? Zero. Good. I think I can figure that one out again. And zero. By the way, how much should this add up to? Uh, better, right? If you add that and it comes out like 95% or like 120%, you probably made a mistake somewhere. So that's a way to, that you can check your work. Your relative frequency should add to 100%. That's what it should do. If it doesn't, you got an error somewhere. Now, because we're rounding, could you technically be over or under a little teeny bit? Yeah, you could because you're rounding, but it's not going to be much. It's not going to be like over a percent. So if it is, then you, you have an error there. How many people are with me so far in relative frequency? Good. So relative means as compared to the whole. That's what relative means. It's how a much, percentage. How much over or under would it be a little wrong? Probably not over a percent. Could go point three. Um, if we were over like three percent, if it was like hundred three percent, there'd be something wrong. Either that or you have a lot of classes. That could, that, I guess that could happen. Around. Okay, so let's move on from relative frequency distributions. There's one other one we have to talk about before our histograms and some of our graphing here. It's called a cumulative frequency distribution. You ever heard that word cumulative? You, you have a, something that's cumulative, right? Your GPA. Uh, you have the GPA. Cumulative GPA is not just for a semester, is it? It's for what? Everything. Whole college experience. Yeah, that's exactly right. So cumulative means you're kind of adding to it as you go, right? You take a semester, that's your GPA, that's also your cumulative. But the next semester you take, not only do you have a GPA for that individual semester, you combine it with the first one. Are, are you following me along? Because I'm going to make I'm gonna draw an analogy here. After you take another semester, it's not just that one, but it's this one combined with the other two. And one after that is combined with the other three. You just keep on combining them and combining them. That's how a cumulative frequency distribution works as well. It just keeps on adding to it class by class. <clears throat> so cumulative frequency distribution. This keeps on adding as you go class by class. I'll say it adds sequential classes together. Let's try this for a second. So we have uh, in our very first class, how many people? in our very first class. Okay, so if we're going to make a cumulative frequency distribution, what you keep asking yourself is, how many people do you have right now, including all the previous classes? So after our first class, check it out. After our first class, how many people do we have total after this, right, at this class? Now, we're going to go down to the next class. How many people do we have total after this class? Remember, it's cumulative, so it includes the first class. Well, how'd you get to 35? Great, so we're just adding up everything before. That's what makes it cumulative. As you keep going down, you just add everything up above it. So this is going to be 35. That's how many people are this class or above. How many people are going to be after our third class over here? So you're not adding these two, are you? You're adding the, this column, your frequencies. Cumulative frequency means you're adding the frequency as you go. So here we had only 25 people. Here we have 35 people. Here we have how many again? How about after this one? How about after this one? This one? Guess what? Is this a coincidence? Are these are the same? Pretty good. 
we added up all the people in a different way. We added up all the people, right? When you get down to the end, these should be exactly the same number. If they're not, well, you have a mistake there. Cumulative frequency will end at the total number that you collected. But that's it. That's where we're end. Do you feel okay with all of our class width, lower class limit, upper class limit, class midpoint, class boundaries, making up our frequency distribution, and now with relative and cumulative frequency? Now, raise your hand and feel okay with that. That's good. That's great. You'll get some practice tonight when you go home and do some of that homework. Okay. By the way, you're going to go home and do some of that homework. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, it's Monday without homework, right? Right? I know, right? It's actually a decent Monday. Okay. We are, in a second, going to make this more graphical because a lot of people have trouble just looking at numbers and understanding really what we're trying to get them to grasp. So, especially in, in real life, we like to use graphs, uh, pie charts or, or histograms, bar charts, things like that to make our data more visible because people can look at a graph and go, oh, I see. But when you look at the number, a lot of people aren't going to really grasp that concept. You get what I'm saying? So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to make up a few graphs here. Before I do that, I have to talk about the word normal. I don't mean normal like. That guy is not normal. Yeah, that's not the type of normal we're talking about. I'm talking about data normal. Data normal means that data goes up to a center point and goes back down. This data right here is not normal. You're going to see that more in our graph than, than, uh, than in this data. But this data, can you see how most of the data is centered right here at the very beginning of our frequency, and then it really trails off here. Do you see that? There's no trail off up here. It starts highest and it goes lowest. Do you see that? This means it's not normal. Normal data would look like this. If we were to graph it on a, like a bar chart or something, it would have a rise, peak, and a fall. That's a normal distribution. This one is not going to be a normal distribution. We'll see that when, when we graph it. So when they ask you what normal means, normal means that your data rises to a peak and then falls down again. That's what normal means. Okay, so let's try making up a couple graphs. We're going to do a histogram first. If you're not familiar with the histogram, you know what a bar chart is, right? bar chart has a horizontal and a vertical axis and you just make little bars. A histogram is simply a bar chart where the bars are touching. There's no space between the bars, which is why we had to have the class boundaries in the first place, so we had our bars touching. So histogram what we're going to say is this is just a touching bar chart. Touching bar chart. I'm not touch, talking about touching like Hallmark touching, you know that, right? Oh, thank you for my bar chart. Not like that. It's like you know, the bars are touching. You get that? I was just kidding, by the way. That was a joke. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> 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 Told you it was funny. <laughs> you got to take my word for it. Of course, we're going to have two axes, the horizontal and the vertical. It's not really an x, y because it doesn't go anywhere else. It's only the quadrant one if you were going to consider it that way.